हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर मनीष श्रेष्ठ वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट हरियाणा स्कूल ऑफ बिजनेस जी जे यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी हिसार टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द टॉपिक परफॉर्मेंस काउंसलिंग बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द डिस्कशन लेट्स हैव ए लुक एट द कॉन्टेंट्स द डिस्कशन विल स्टार्ट विद द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ परफॉर्मेंस काउंसलिंग फॉलोड बाय इट्स कॉम्पोनेंट्स objectives types and situations and in the end summary today's lecture is having following learning objectives it enables the students to understand the importance of counseling in improving performance and it also makes them familiar with the framework of performance counseling performance management in any organization strives to develop an ex expected level of performance by an employee a smooth communication between managers and employees measures actual performance against preset standards in the process of performance management both individual and organization goals are expected to be achieved whether an organization is doing fine totally depends on the performance of its human components in relation to performance organization generally introduce a system that takes care of attainment of organizational goals through continuously keeping a check on the performance of employees all the employees in the organization need to perform at the desired level of expectation any performance which is not in accordance with the organizational culture values and goals seeks attention when employees are performing below accepted standards it raises a performance issue it is important to pay attention to an employee who is performing poorly on a continuous basis such situation demands immediate action from the manager a manager must quickly look into the matter and address the problem time also plays an important role as poor performance is contagious and could convert into a habit an individual's poor performance also affects the team performance an employee's shortcomings need to be addressed at an early stage in order to avoid major problems also if no action is taken to address the performance management issue then it could convert into new acceptable performance unaccepted level of performance could be in the form of failure to deliver the expected outcomes habitual shirking of work and or or misbehavior with such a situation there are few options available to a manager such as issue a warning termination for repeated behavior or counseling for improving the performance here performance counseling plays an important role as it is too costly to hire new personnel in comparison to retain an existing one performance counseling is an activity that aims at informing an employee the current level of performance areas where improvement is required and ways to improve the performance it also strives for an early detection of poor performance and quick action to arrest the downfall as the demand of the r is to have those people who could exceed the performance expectations or at least perform at the minimum expected level performance counseling helps the organization to get these results to get better understanding of performance counseling following understandings and definitions are considered performance counseling is a strategy adopted by managers to improve the performance of an employee performance counseling is an activity that helps an employee to gain knowledge about him or herself another understanding of performance counseling it is an activity that is performed when an employee displays consistent poor performance and performance counseling is an effort made by counselor to identify strengths and weaknesses of an employee 
and to suggest the ways to reduce the weaknesses through usage of strengths. Performance counselling is an act of a counsellor who assists the counsellee in changing the perception about things for better outcomes. Through counselling, the state of mind of an employee could be changed and a better outlook towards the performance could be developed. There exist a few misconceptions about counselling. Many a times it is treated as a process of correcting and controlling the employee's behaviour while giving a negative feedback. It makes counselling related to the term criticism. Also, performance counselling is not clinical counselling. Performance counselling is offered on a periodic basis to keep the level of performance on track and extreme conditions do not arise. It looks at a broader perspective for improving overall performance and not related to a specific job. There are various components of performance counselling and every situation related to performance counselling requires the presence of few essential components such as counsellor. He is the person who has shown a proven track record in handling performance related issues. A person who is skilled enough to handle behavioural concerns. To become a counsellor, to have a good interpersonal skills, domain knowledge, experience and understanding of purpose of the organisation. The second component is counsellee. Counsellee is a person who needs assistance, a person who at present is not performing as per the expectations. To become a counsellee, an employee must display certain skills and potential for growth. A counsellee is expected to take initiative in resolving the issues related to performance and listen to the suggestions of the counsellor carefully. Third component is situation. A situation must exist in the organization that requires the application of counselling activity. Generally, counselling is done on a regular basis, but its importance increases manifold when an employee displays a continuous poor performance. And the last component is organization. Organization is another vital component of the counselling activity. The organization must admit the requirement of counselling and provide essential resources to get maximum out of such activity. The resource could be in term of experts, time for managers and space for conducting counselling activity. Employee issues and organisational consequences It is not a case that performance of an employee goes down suddenly. Generally, a series of activities are responsible for poor performance and eventual organizational implications. Sometimes an employee is facing certain challenges on the personal front. These challenges might relate to career, health, family and financial matters. The presence of stress at personal front causes impact on the performance level of the employee. The indicators showing performance related concerns are frequent absenteeism from the job, persistent fatigue, opting for drug related abuse and occurrence of interpersonal conflicts. Things do not end here as poor performance is having organizational consequences. A poor performing employee increases the overall cost of production, spreads negativity and reduces the morale of co-workers. Many a times such employees leave the organization, pushing the organization to restart the costly and kind time consuming recruitment process. 
there are many objectives of performance counseling one of the major objective of performance counseling is to motivate employees assume accountability for their individual performances and development self exploration by an employee about the individual strengths and weaknesses with the help of a certain assistance of a counselor is the most desirable outcome of any counseling activity generally spoon feeding an employee with assessment does not serve the real purpose of counseling in order to survive in the organization for a longer period of time an employee has to maintain a reasonable level of performance counseling aims at helping an individual in identifying the problem areas affecting the performance and searching best possible option to resolve it from the available options following are the few other objectives of performance counseling it enables the employees to conduct an independent swot analysis it improves the competence level of employees it helps an employee in realizing his true potential in the organization it also provides a comprehensive understanding of environment within which performance has to be delivered to enable an employee to get better insight about the personal behaviors and their implications on performance it develops a better perspective towards alternatives for handling a performance related issue it provides a constructive feedback about the weak areas of performance it also provides assistance in reviewing the current path of growth with possible outcomes and finally it encourages for designing future oriented performance plans types of performance counseling on the basis of involvement of parties counseling could be presented as a continuum one extreme of the continuum is counseling that gives least importance to the viewpoints of the counselee and resembles spoon feeding the other extreme of the continuum is least involvement of the counselor and active role is played by the counselee overall there are three types of counseling directive counseling non directive counseling and participative counseling the choice of a counseling method totally depends upon the situation and intentions of the parties involved directive counseling in this type of counseling a full scale counseling is provided to the counselee here the counselee plays a relative passive relatively passive role and the counselor decides how the counseling session would move it is more of telling advising and reassuring the counselee about the steps needed to be followed to improve performance non directive counseling this is just the opposite of directive counseling and requires a high level of involvement of counseling the employee volunteers to explain the activities performed to improve performance outcomes of these efforts problem areas and possible ways to improvement the role of a counselor in non directive counseling is to patiently listen to the viewpoints of the counselee and offer encouragements wherever the counselor feels that counselee has done it correctly in this type of counseling the employee takes the onus of the outcome of a particular counseling activity the counselee assumes the charge of the session and sets the direction participative counseling a participative counseling offers the midway to the above two counseling styles both the styles carry certain drawbacks employees who are independent tend to oppose directive counseling method as it curtails freedom of expression non directive counseling demands extremely skilled professionals who can extract the relevant guidance point of the discussion 
all the companies does not have that kind of professional internally so external experts need to be hired causing huge expenditure for the organization the participative counseling focuses on a mutual relationship between counselor and counselee wherein both exchange each other's viewpoint the mutual interaction results in solution to the performance related issue at hand in participative counseling the outcome is dependent upon the knowledge skills and understanding of the counselee situations appropriate for feedback and counseling as compared to counseling a feedback is more informal in nature it could take a shape ranging from an informal chat with the employee to a discussion about formal performance related written reports on the other hand counseling is more formal and strives to address performance based issues generally counseling is required when an employee fails to act upon the feedback provided so feedback precedes counseling activity there are certain scenarios when it is appropriate to provide feedback and counseling these scenarios are when a new employee is appointed and starts performing during the probation period counseling is important there is a strong need to provide feedback and counsel to keep the performance in line with the organizational expectation it is also required when performance appraisal is conducted as part of performance appraisal process it is essential to convey the observations of reviewers and conduct a counseling activity to improve on deficit areas after selecting an employee for a new position it is also important to provide feedback and guidance for achievement of expected performance feedback and counseling could be given at the time when employee is not able to meet performance standards and performance is declining on a continuous basis another time the application of both the concepts is equally important even when the employee is performing extremely well and able to manage the level of performance on a consistent basis and just after an issue has been resolved successfully counseling could be done at this juncture of a time positive reinforcement and encouragement could do wonders for enhancing the morale of an employee it further increases the commitment level towards better performance conditions for effective counseling for reaping the maximum benefit out of counseling activity an organization is required to provide right kind of environment conducive counseling environment is instrumental in creating a win win situation for the counselee the counselor and the organization the few essential conditions for counseling to happen are that various departments in the organization must establish a culture where flow of communication is smooth a culture of openness makes it easier to identify the various problem areas the next essential is establishment of climate of honesty and trust if possible the counselor and the counselee should share and respect each other's viewpoints this mutual sharing facilitates building up of confidence between them an initiative is required by both the parties for successful counseling involvement of employees in discussing the performance related issues and their view about them is an essential input that affects the outcome of counseling activity another essential is to keep the focus of counseling activity on work related behavior although personal matters could be re- could be the reason of poor performance but the outcome of every counseling session should be towards achievement of organizational goals 
And finally, performance based rewards should not be the part of discussion related to performance counseling. The main aim of counseling is to improve the performance of an individual and assist him during his efforts for the same. Counseling is more inclined towards employee development as compared to getting financial rewards through higher level of performance. Performance Counseling Outcome Options Performance counseling is an instrument in the hand of a manager that has to be used in the best interest of the organization and employees. The process related outcomes would range from rewarding and recognizing the improvement in performance to the termination of an individual. The outcome is totally dependent on the willingness and capabilities of an individual to improve. It all starts with the manager ensuring that the poor performance is not a result of flaws in the system or lack of adequate resources. Basically, a manager has to rule the possibility of organization as reason of poor performance of an individual. Once it is done, the manager need to call the employees and politely discuss the possible reasons for underperformance. While discussing arguments based on facts are suggested. Till now, it is not that much important to document the proceedings of the discussion. This informal meeting provides an indication to an individual that his performance is being observed and is a matter of concern. The purpose is that the individual should change his behavior without much of botheration. If the poor performance still persists, a formal warning is issued during a formal counseling session. The consequences of continuing poor show are also discussed. An opportunity is also provided to the employee to present his part. Overall, significance of meeting is highlighted to the employee and documentation is done. If the poor performance continues, another warning is issued in the second formal counseling session. Manager again asks for any help required to improve the performance. During the second counseling meeting, the higher authorities are also informed about the issue at hand. No further changes in the performance trend of the employee attract a final warning stating that non-compliance to performance standards would result into termination. Still, after all the warnings and notification, performance of the employee does not improve, a letter of termination is issued. So, performance counseling activity is for the aid of employee and aims at his long-term sustainability in the organization. Counseling Skills to counsel an employee is a challenging task that requires special skills on the part of counselor or manager. A manager who lacks the required skills might compromise the whole purpose of the performance counseling activity. While providing counseling, the manager has to think about assisting the employee in articulating the path for getting enhanced performance. It requires certain skills with a counselor. These skills are communication skills. As counseling requires mutual exchange of information and the ideas, presence of excellent communication skills is must. It removes any kind of ambiguity and misunderstanding during development discussions. Good communication skills are the foundation of building trust in a relationship. In case of non-directive counseling, role of listening skills could not be undermined. Motivation skills. The performance of an employee could be improved if he feels motivated to do so. The motivational skills of the counselor help in generating confidence in the counseling. Providing positive reinforcement and constructive feedback are the backbone for an effective counseling activity. Encouragement for all the good efforts and inducement of confidence to do better
could help the employee deliver consistent good performance. Analytical skills A manager must be equipped with the analytical skills. He must be in a position to assess the various alternatives available to improve performance and their possible outcomes. He must identify the weak areas of the employee performance and the strengths through which an employee can overcome its weaknesses. Manager must be able to generate alternatives for solution to issue at hand. Interpersonal skills Generally, all individual performances related issues are having an emotional connection. A manager must have a skill to empathize with the employee in order to understand his point of view. Strong interpersonal skills could help the manager in creating an environment of trust. To summarize the discussion, all the employees in the organization need to perform at the desired level of expectation. Any performance which is not in accordance with the organizational culture, values and goals seeks attention. When employees are performing below accepted standards, it raises a performance issue. It is also important to pay attention to an employee who is performing poorly on a continuous basis. Such situation demands immediate action from the manager. Performance counseling is a strategy adopted by a manager to improve the performance of an employee. One of the major objective of performance counseling is to motivate employees, assume accountability for the individual performances and development. Counselor, counseling, situation and organization are the four major components of performance counseling. Generally, counseling is required when an employee fails to act upon the feedback provided. So, feedback precedes counseling activity. On the basis of involvement of parties, counseling could be presented as a continuum. One extreme of the continuum is counseling that gives least importance to the viewpoints of the counselee and resembles spoon feeding. The other extreme of the continuum is involvement of counsellor and active role is played by the counselee. The choice of a counselling method totally depends upon the situation and intentions of the parties involved. Happy learning!